a drink, right? I need a drink. Okay, so the lowest level is I just eat and sleep. I don't care. I watch TV and I just you know, go to bed. The second level of thinking would be, oh wow, there's thunderstorm. It's so magnificent. Wow, who made that possible? Is it Poseidon or is it Thor or is it Neptune? Which God made that possible? Or, oh, it, it's dry. There's no water. Our corn needs water and our soybeans. So that, you know, we'll have corn uh, for harvest. What do we do? Maybe I do a rain dance. Okay, that's the second level. Everything is still magical. Or, well, if I don't have money, I pray I win the lottery. That's still low stage of, of consciousness, but it's higher than just eating and sleeping and not knowing what's going on, right? Uh, at least you, you think you can change things, but it's not scientific. It's just based on, well, I hope I win. I pray that I win, whoever your God is. And then the third one is, you're not just naive or magical, but you're now interacting with the world. You don't just say, okay, I come to class, I have a grade, I'm happy to pass, I'm happy to get a GED, I'm happy to get a job, that's fine. Rather, you're involved. You're looking at yourself, why am I the way I am? Why is my situation like this? Then you study your economic uh, situation, you study the political situation, you look at uh, the ideology, and then you say, is color related to economic class? Is ethnicity related to racism? So you start thinking, and then you would say, how come most of the people in prison, not most, a lot of people are black, but there are more white people doing drugs. What's going on? Then you start questioning. Like statistically, uh, it's not true that African Americans do more drugs. It's, in fact, statistically, it's uh, European American. How come African Americans are in prison more than uh, the European Americans? So you start uh, getting uh, consciousness, it's called a higher level of consciousness. That's a higher state. You're not just eating and sleeping and watching TV and uh, Vine, you know, whatever. Rather, you're not just praying to God, but now you are not asking questions and trying to change it. Okay, so, but the critique is how do you measure consciousness? How do I know you are on the naive stage? You just look and sleep. Maybe I can see all your brain pain. Maybe you're on that stage. I have my coffee. But how do I know if you're just magical? See? Or how do I know if you're already thinking? Like, does my color have something to do with how people treat me? And who knows what DWB is? You know what it is? Do you know what's DWB? Do you know what's DWB? Driving while black or brown. You heard that? Yeah, okay. Those words. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, there's a high chance that they see you oh, this person is Latino or Asian or African. Let's stop this person and check. And look fine for reason for them to get a ticket. It's called driving one black or brown, DWB. And it happens a lot. You know, people talk about it. And you know Derek Smith? No. He's with the Center for Black Studies at NIU. They talk about that too. That uh, people of color are targets, I mean, uh, oftentimes. You don't, you don't have that experience while driving? No? Okay, good for you. Okay, but later, so he gave up talking about consciousness because it's hard to measure if you have change or not. So his early stage was to talk about Christianity, uh, Christian ethics, and existentialism. 
and then putting that in its context. So it's not just an abstract idea of Jesus in the Bible, you know, uh, Matthew 12, chapter 12, verse 3, whatever. Rather, it was looking at if Jesus were here in Brazil, where he was, who would he be eating with? Maybe the street children. Maybe the prostitutes. Maybe the people who are sick. Because that's what, you know, in the Bible, that's what he did. And he were, when people were condemned as dirty women, condemned as people who were leprosy, all kinds of diseases, today that would be AIDS. So that was how Freire was thinking when he was there. So he was making Christianity a living faith. It's not just that thing in the books. So Freire would go back to Moses, Mary, you know, Jesus, and consider how that would be. That's the first stage. Freire was a Christian. Now on the second stage, we're now moving. Okay, part two. So how did Freire develop? At this time, he had changed. He had not only mentioned uh, the Bible, but rather he also talked about Marxism. Uh, what is Marxism? Does anyone know? Have you heard of the word? Yeah. You've heard of Marxism? No, exactly. Okay, but yeah. So you'll see in Marxism, we're talking about workers. So instead of just saying we are all human beings, we're saying yes, we're all human beings, but the workers are not paid well. Okay? And then we blame the workers for the problems. We say, how come there's so many undocumented people? Excuse me, don't you need people to pick the, the harvest, the produce from the farm? And then you blame it. It's double standard. It's hypocrisy. Okay? We need people to work in the farm. And then we actually get them and pay them below minimum wage and then pay them for all the problems. And no one else wants to work the farm. See, there's so much double talk. So when you talk about Marxism, you're talking about the interests of the workers. Uh, have you heard, do you know World Cup? Do you know what World Cup is? Okay. Yeah? Okay. Do you know what World Cup is? It's football. Yeah. Yeah, what Americans call soccer, right, yeah. So, yeah. so people who are working, because in Qatar, where's Qatar? It's in the Middle East. How is the weather in the Middle East? It's desert, right? So it's going to be hot. Many workers there are not given water. And their passports are taken away. They're not paid two months' salary. Like a hundred of them died because of heart attack. No water in the desert working, and no salary. This is in the news. You can go to the news. Just recently, about a hundred. They, they, are, they are from other countries, like from Nepal. Where's Nepal? Yeah, in Nepal. It's in the Himalayas. Himalayas, where are they? Yeah. The, mountain on earth. They live there and you know, they come from a cold country and then they work in the desert and they die. Some are like 19 years old. You know, very young people. And, uh, so when you talk about Marxism, the focus is on the workers. So you don't just say we're all humans, we're all equal. Rather you say, yeah, we're all humans. But workers are underpaid and overworked and they don't have power. So we have to understand their Che Guevara? No? No, Che Guevara is a famous uh, revolutionary from uh, Argentina who went to Cuba. There was a movie about him. So, not one, you see there's Christianity skills in Freire's uh, presentation. But then he uh, included Marxism. importance of the working class. And we have to engage in a struggle. So it's not anymore just pray. Pray is not enough anymore. This is the second stage, the scientific prayer. 
you have to fight for your rights. Hey, don't just say, dear God, I underpay all the work, can you help me? I want to have money and go to heaven and have a good life. Not anymore. This is another stage where he said, no, to fight for our rights. No one will take up the cost of the workers. So we have to work with the working people and make sure they get paid properly. So that's the second stage of prayer. And he also talked about the rights of people for national independence. People should not interfere with their local politics. Okay, so that's the middle part of prayer. So the early prayer was mostly Christian, just mentioned this. And the middle prayer, the scientific prayer, was Marxist. Are they separate? Uh, in fact, no, because young prayer was heavily Christian. The scientific prayer was heavily Marxist, but in both of them, uh, he was still using existentialist philosophy. Remember, it means uh, this is our life. I make my life. Uh, I'm bound to be free. It's my duty uh, whether I want to change my life or accept my life as it is. So that's existentialism. So you still have to own your future. You have to work on So now he added Marxism, aside from Christians, uh, concern for the working class. Okay? So in the early stage, uh, in the early stage, he was just focusing on uh, individual, uh, your own uh, life. You have your own responsibility to win. But then with a heavy baggage of Christian values. Now in the second stage, he was saying Christianity alone is necessary but not sufficient. We now have to focus on the rights of the working class. Okay? And it's now called the pedagogy of the oppressed. As opposed to his first book, the education for critical consciousness was every Christian existentialist. Now he was quoting Che Guevara, Fidel Castro, Franz Fanon, uh, many. Karl Marx, Lenny, that uh, our salvation does not rest on God alone, but in our struggle to gain our rights. So this is the second stage. If you look at uh, the young Freire in the book, Education for Critical Consciousness, in fact, that was his doc, uh, dissertation for his doctorate. He talked about the need to be committed uh, for social change. And in his book, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed, he now started quoting a classical Marxist literature, like Marx, Lenin, Engels. And then he also quoted Western Marxists. They would be what we call as critical theories, okay, from Herbert Marcuse to Adorno uh, to Althusser, uh, who were talking about the need to change capitalist system and make it work, transform within the capitalist system. Whereas the classical Marxists are saying, no, we have to have a total break. Uh, capitalism is the problem. Okay? And post-colonial literature would be, uh, for example, Negritude of Sango uh, in, in Africa. And then you have many, uh, many African authors in France, China, okay, from Martini. Also, Che Guevara and Fidel Castro. He was now bringing.